everybody welcome back to my channel it has been a while since you've seen my face um, I just want to say I kind of explained in my last video that I did um, but I kind of just lost motivation a little bit there for my filming um, but after getting the GoPro I feel like the motivation spurred back in um, so today I'm going to be doing a video on kind of a few tips that I would give you if you a feeling like your riding is kind of going a bit downhill and you're not feeling very positive about it or very excited to go to the stables or you're just in a bit of a funk basically for when you're riding. So these are some tips that I think that you can apply um, that will make your riding a much more enjoyable and positive experience no matter what level of riding you are. So let's get into it. So I have the tips written down on my phone, so hence why I am going to be looking at my phone basically the whole time. Um, the first tip I have for you is be very flexible. Um, by flexible, I don't mean physically flexible. I mean, that's important too. Um, not that my flexibility is very high. Um, but in regards to flexibility, what I mean is, is, say for example, you had a plan to go do... You wanted to practice your dressage test, but the dressage arena is closed closed. You need to have a very flexible mindset and be able to adapt whatever your plan was or whatever you wanted to do to the situation that you're currently in. And um, for example, there have been times when I've wanted to go jump, um, but I haven't been able to get out to the park or it's been raining or something like that and I my head is instantly like, damn it, and you go in this funk because you can't... Jumping for me is my favourite thing to do when I horse ride and I go into this like downturn basically because... I've wanted to, uh, sorry if I'm a bit like mumbly, I haven't filmed for ages, um, because I've wanted to do what I wanted to do. So it's very important that you're very flexible and you are able to adapt what you wanted to do to your current environment and not being too annoyed or upset if what you wanted to do can't happen because that instantly, that first, oh I can't go to the jumping arena, damn it I'm going to have to go to the dressage arena, that instant thought puts your whole ride in a bit of a negative vibe so make sure that you're very flexible with your environment and the circumstances that are given to you. Second tip is laugh and smile a lot. Um, by this I mean if you make a mistake laugh about it, go fix it, go try it again. Um, there are so many times when I see riders who are very, I, th I think I get, I definitely get like this sometimes too where it all gets a bit too serious and you forget that it's you're meant you're doing it because you enjoy it. So that's a big tip too is just laugh and smile a lot about what you're doing. If you fall off, try and laugh about it, get back on and try it again but with a smile. Because I think that instantly laughing or just smiling about a situation lightens your whole mood and makes it just a much more positive ride. So I think that's really important as well. Break your rides up. So by this I mean don't spend weeks on end doing flat work or doing jumping or just going around the park. Break up your rides a lot. Um, so for me, last year there was this real patch of, um, of bad weather and honestly I think my rider mindset has improved dramatically since last year. Um, but last year there was this real patch of real bad weather and I remember I was stuck in this arena for like God knows how, it felt like two months and I hadn't been outdoors to ride or anything like that and I felt very negative about it every ride and I was constantly doing the same thing. But the truth of the matter is that even if you're in one environment, you can still change up what you do in your ride. You can have a very serious ride where you work on transitions and collection or you can have a more relaxed ride where you work on, you know, um, trust and going around on a long rain and not freaking out. There, can, there are always very different rides you can do to break up kind of your riding regime even if you're not in the same environment. So even if you are in the same environment. So that's something that you could think about is me personally I try on a... I have about three rides a week. Um, one of those rides I met is a lesson so it's very like heads down serious let's get to it. On a Thursday I usually have a flat work session where I will work on whatever I've been working on in the lesson but kind of on a more flat work level and then on Sundays I usually just go out and have fun and jump or just do something that I enjoy so I think I have a really good balance of 
you know, getting down and serious about it, but also kind of just having fun and just rolling with it. So I think that it's really important that you break up your rides and do a lot of different things. Um, even if that means, you know, doing groundwork instead of going on a ride. Um, I didn't really start doing groundwork with the horses that I worked with till maybe 12 months ago, I don't know. But I found that also breaking it up, doing a groundwork session, you know, once or twice a week has also been it also keeps you more connected, a bit more positive and a bit more open to trying new things and etc, which I'll get on to later. Ride in a group. If you have always been riding by yourself um, and you feel like you're going in again into this kind of negative spiral, um, try and ride with a group. I think riding in a group environment is way more fun because A, you can kind of pick up from different riders. I know in my group, um, whenever other riders ride, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I would have done that. Oh, that's really cool. Look how they respond to that situation. Maybe I could try and apply that to when I get in that situation. And you can kind of learn off the other, off other people. And it's more fun and it's more like sociable. And I think riding in a group is just a really easy, quick fix to making riding seem much more fun. And especially when like, you know, someone falls off and you can all kind of laugh about it, but then cheer them when you get back on and a lot of encouragement is what I think comes from group rides and I think that's really important when you're riding. Spend a lot of time with your horse before and after you ride. Um, so I had a ride on Thursday um, where I rode Splash and honestly it was just one of not the best rides I've ever had but kind of the best time frames I've ever spent with him. So I got there and I made a very big deal, I got there quite early to the stables and I said you know what I'm going to spend literally like half an hour just grooming him patting him, giving him some treats, just keep it, getting him in a positive mindset before I even address my own rider mindset. So I spent heaps of time grooming him. Splash isn't usually actually one who likes to be groomed or to be kind of, you know, patted or things like that, but he actually loved it and he had his ears forward the whole time and I think doing it very relaxed and not rushing to get the saddle on and get out there and get riding and be on a time restriction, I think that was really important and he was just, he was amazing in the ride and I think that was really because I spent so much time beforehand. And then afterwards I did the same thing, I didn't actually wash him because um, we didn't work too str like strenuously so he wasn't that, he wasn't that sweaty. So I spent a lot of time again to groom him, rug him, do his water, spend some time with him and I just found that I, that afternoon for me was one of the most positive riding afternoons I think I've had just because I really made sure that before and after was just as important as the actual ride itself. Finish rides on a positive note. So I actually did a whole video on how I like to structure my rides and I'll leave that in the description or put it somewhere on the screen or at the end of the video. Um, but I always, I don't know if I really touched on it, but I do that schedule which you can go watch the video of how I ride, you know, my warm up, etc. I talk about that in that video. Um, but I always make sure that I finish my ride on a positive note. Um, so for example, like this afternoon that I was just talking about, um, I remember we were doing a very, we very much balanced it between having some fun, cantering around, but then working on, you know, collection, sitting trot, no stirrups, then changing it up, doing a bit of long rain stuff. Um, and I finished it off just trotting around on a long rein with his ears forward and him stretching out. And for me, that's a positive note. A, because he likes it, he's got his ears forward the whole time, he's happy about it, you can see he's enjoying what he's doing. And I finished the session on that, that was also my cool down. But I finished the session on that because it was a positive note and he would have just gone back into the stable feeling much nicer about it. It's kind of like if you think when you're at school, me for example, whenever I go to school, we have six periods at our school. And if I have a really good sixth period, like the last one, I leave school feeling really happy and really energized and really like, I don't know, excited about the afternoon. But if I finish period six in a class I don't particularly like, or there was a bad teacher, or there was work that I didn't enjoy, if I finish school like that in period six, I usually come out kind of a bit like sluggish and lethargic and not really wanting to do anything. So I think it's kind of the same when you ride a horse. Next tip is ride in a bunch of different environments. Um, where I ride, I'm very lucky. I get to ride in up to three different type of indoor arenas, I suppose you could say. Um, I get to ride out in a public park. I get to ride in outdoor jumping arenas. I get to use cross country things. I get to use canter tracks. I get to go on hacks occasionally. Um, 
I'm very lucky because I get to ride in a lot of different environments. So if you can apply that to your riding and ride outdoors, ride indoors, go to a new environment you haven't been to before, ride through a forest. Um, there is a for like a kind of foresty area, very small, but where I ride, and occasionally I'll go through there. Changes it up a little bit. Your horses get a little bit more excited and refreshed, and I think it just makes riding more positive. So reflect on your ride and what you could have done better. Um, I think if ever you want to feel positive about your riding, unless you're only doing it purely because it's your break from the week, um, I think I do it, I think I ride because of a combination of both. I think I ride because it is like a bit of a relaxation, a chance to unwind. It's my form of meditation, if you want to put it that way. Um, but I think I also do it because I do want to improve. Not everyone wants to. I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not a competitor or I don't compete or things like that. So I'm not, you know, really trying to like escalate and get to the top, but I am when I ride wanting to improve. So for that reason, I feel like a bit unfulfilled if I don't reflect on what I've done or try and have an aim for the next ride. So I think having goals and aims and reflecting on what you've done is really great to keep yourself kind of looking at horse riding as a positive light. Um, me personally, um, whenever I ride, whoever has driven me to the stables, I will talk about what I did in my ride, I will say what I think I should have done better, and that's my own form of reflection. I know some people who will actually like... I know some people actually like to write down, I did try and do that but I couldn't keep up with it, but you can write, make a little spreadsheet and you know, say this was the date of my ride, this is what we did, this is what I could have done better, this is what, what I want to do next time. So some sort of reflection, I think it's really nice. And I also did talk about that in my improving your writing um, lesson structure, that kind of video. So I'll be sure to leave that video somewhere. Keep doing new things. Um, by that I mean if, especially if you're riding a new horse, um, for example, you guys know I'm riding Splash, there are a lot of things, I feel like we've progressed crazily in the last few months because I watched back a video from January, um, the first time I really like seriously rode him and honestly just the improvement in jumping in flat in literally everything has improved so much and I think it's because I've been very open-minded to trying new things with this horse I've been trying to jump higher a little bit faster obviously with safety and things trying to jump higher a little bit faster doing a bit more cross-country I've been trying to do a little bit more canter work um, on the grass spending a lot more time riding outdoors and just trying new things has kept my riding very happy um, for the last few months so I think trying new things is very very important and if you've never jumped before go out and jump even if you're not aspiring to be a show jumper get an instructor be like you know what I just want to try some jumping and it keeps your mind refreshed it keeps your horse refreshed and overall horse riding just becomes a much happier thing to do just respond and listen to your horse's body language so um, obviously there are times when your horse is not going to be incredibly happy with what you're doing and but you kind of are going to do it anyways I understand that um, however say for example you are doing you are asking for a canter transition and every time you ask your horse to, do, to go forward or for a particular transition or a change in gait your horse flicks his ears back you swishes his tail etc etc me when that happens I take that as an indicator that I'm either doing something wrong or I need to make my horse more in willing to do it so whether that be you know using my voice like come on good boy or patting him or making again sure that I'm very clear about what I'm asking I think responding to and listening to your horse's body language just it, when you respond to how they're feeling they will they will work better for you and in turn that just creates a much better horse ride for you and a much better lesson or a much better hack or whatever it is that you're doing if you respond and you 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 use your horse's emotions and you make sure that you're adapting to also what they want to do I think is important too. So everyone thank you guys for watching this week's video I hope you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up if you did. Um, last week was a GoPro video which you guys loved the views smashed it so I was so happy about that. I do have another GoPro video which I filmed last week um, when you're seeing this, um, that will be up next week because I'm I'm going to have a few assignments now in the, within the next week or so, so I don't really have time to film another video. Um, sorry, the lighting just changed. Um, so next week will be a GoPro video, but that GoPro video was from a week ago, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye.